I think throughout life we all experience moments of inspiration and passion and creativity. And in these moments we can do our best work. The kind of stuff that other people can feel too. I try to keep that energy up on this channel because astrophotography is too important to sell short. If it ever comes off in a way that doesn't feel pure and real, I apologize. I really do love this hobby and I still can't believe I get to do it every day. Tonight I'm going to photograph the same area of the night sky using two different telescopes at very different magnifications. You'll see how the same area of space can look completely different depending on how deep you go. The planet Mars continues to dominate the night sky and it's been so fun to observe and photograph this planet over the last few weeks. But tonight is all about a nebula and in the case of the smaller telescope that I'm using an entire nebula region. This isn't a scientific experiment by any means. It's just kind of a fun way to look at the same object photographed using two different telescopes. But they're not that different. They're both triplet apochromatic refractors, but there's a whopping 800 millimeters of focal length between them. The big one shooting at 1,075 millimeters at f7, and the small one shooting at 275 millimeters at f4.5. Both setups are using dedicated astronomy cameras made for astrophotography to shoot the images. On the little one, it's a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro, a one-shot color CMOS camera. And on the other one is a Starlight Express monochrome CCD camera. So not exactly a head-to-head -head matchup, but I think it'll be super interesting to see the results on the same target shot in different ways. So what is the deep sky target I'm shooting tonight? It is the stunning bubble nebula in Cassiopeia. It's a bright, beautiful hydrogen emission nebula that really does look good at any focal length. Through the large telescope, I'll focus on the bubble itself and in the wide field compact refractor, I'll shoot the entire region because there's lots of interesting nebulosity surrounding the bubble nebula. The forecast says these clouds are supposed to dissipate in the next half hour to an hour or so, so hopefully that holds true and uh, I can get set up and running. The image scale created by the sensors I'm using in these two cameras really is going to intensify the drastic differences in field. So that CCD camera has a smaller sensor, it's a 15 millimeter diagonal CCD sensor. So that's really cropping it in a lot more than say a full frame image sensor or even an APS-C. On the other hand, on the wide field compact refractor, it is a micro four third sensor. So bigger than the CCD sensor, but still cropped in a bit. So to really do maximize that difference, I would use an even wider sensor on that compact telescope. But it's something you need to think about when investing in a new telescope. You really wanna look into that image sensor size matched with your telescope. You wanna know what resolution and image scale you can expect. This is the view through the 61 millimeter refractor telescope, a really wide field of view with that one shot color camera. So what you're seeing here is the star field around the bubble nebula region. The bubble nebula is right here, it looks very small. You can see a star cluster over here, uh, some more nebulae over here, and a really interesting nebula. You can just start to faintly see it over here, the lobster claw nebula. So this is just a 10 second loop 
just doing preview frames. I'm actually just calibrating my auto guiding software right now in the background while I'm waiting. It's almost done and then I'll start actually capturing four minute exposures of this region and you'll be able to get a much better idea of what's actually going on in here. But this is the wide field view through the compact refractor. So compare that view to the view through the massive 150 millimeter refractor with over a thousand millimeters of focal length in the CCD camera. Look at the bubble nebula. It's almost filling the frame. Uh, the bubbles right here and then the kind of the outer nebulosity there. But this was just one tiny little section of the image in the smaller refractor. So super wide field. Now it's much deeper and much more cropped as well. Very cool. So obviously this image is going to pick up a lot of really interesting deep details on this nebula that you just don't have the resolution to showcase in the other telescope. The benefit of the other one of course though is that you get to see the full picture of that entire region and everything else that's going on whereas this one is kind of cutting off some of the action on the sides. So pretty cool to see the difference there. Not only is each setup using a different type of camera, but they're also using different filters. So the color camera is using a duo narrowband filter, HA and O3, the Optolong L Extreme, to create a full color image while ignoring a lot of the light pollution. On the CCD camera, the monochrome CCD camera, it's just strictly a six nanometer hydrogen alpha filter on there. So just capturing those impactful details of that emission nebula in hydrogen alpha only. So five minute exposures on the CCD, four minute exposures on the one shot color. There was just a few passing clouds, but I'm actually taking pictures of the nebula now. So I'll be able to share the individual exposures on each camera and let you take a look at them. So here's a much cleaner image of the bubble nebula. And as you can see, it's well isolated and up close through that big refractor. Very cool to see this in the processed final picture. I'm gonna stack the HA exposures with some existing O3 and create a bicolor image that'll just look really cool. It's just a great look for this target. So that's the image I'll share with the big refractor at the end of the video. These are some more hydrogen alpha sub exposures coming through. So really excited about that. Next, we'll take a look at a completed exposure on the small refractor and the one shot color camera. Here's a look at that beautiful wide field of view through the 61 millimeter refractor at, at 275 millimeters. So now you can better see the lobster claw nebula on this side, the bubble nebula. Look how much smaller it is at this focal length. So again, you're seeing all these other things going on in this region of Cassiopeia. So very cool. I don't think it's fair to say that one view is better than the other. I guess it depends on the story you're trying to tell and what you're trying to capture. If you're trying to capture a detailed portrait of the bubble itself, obviously that longer focal length refractor is gonna do a better job at that. But I really enjoy these wide field images as well. So there's a lot of benefits to that wide field of view. And of course you still see that bubble nebula and you have a little more context of what's going on around it.